Well, greetings, dear friends. It's good to have you with us once again. Normally, this would be our Wednesday night Bible class, but because of the trip we made recently down into Monterey, Mexico, to be there with the Bible school for a Bible conference, which also ended in a graduation, and it was, in fact, a 50th anniversary of the work there in Monterey, Mexico. But because of that, uh, we, we, we missed last Wednesday night while we were in Mexico, and we also missed the open forum uh, this week, which was Monday night, and now we're at a Wednesday night again, so we decided, talked about it, and what we're doing is just putting two Wednesday night classes together and declaring it to be the open forum. <laughs> so we're glad to have you with us tonight. And uh, as we've said before, uh, these, uh, these programs are made uh, are available to you and made possible through the facilities of the Midwest Center for Truth here in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas. And uh, they are a ministry of the Bible Research Center here, a production of CMI Audio and Video Network System. They're being brought to you on Ustream and YouTube. So we welcome you with us for this period of time. Uh, in the last open forum, we were looking at the, the reality of our death with Christ. And uh, it amounted to me doing a whole bunch of reading uh, and a bunch of scripture. And I told you that that was a foundation for what would probably then be a future discussion. Uh, and we've dealt with it to some degree. And, but let's just gather it up because there's a lot of confusion about this which has unfortunately opened the door to much misunderstanding and misbelief or misconception altogether. Uh, and since the cross, the very cross of Christ is the centerpiece in my opinion and I think in the opinion of the scripture the very centerpiece of God's eternal plan and purpose which is the ultimate and full exaltation of his son in his own house we need to look for just a little while at least at that cross and then we'll see where else we may go from there the question is how what is to be dead in sin and then what is it to be dead to sin how do we come from <laughs> being dead in sin to being dead to sin uh, the verse that we look at and a verse that I think is key to this understanding it is in Romans 5 Romans 5 uh, verse 20 much much more the law or moreover rather the, moreover the law entered that the offense might abound might be unveiled might be uncovered might be seen to abound but where sin abounded Grace did much more abound. And that's the verse we're looking at. Uh, the verse uh, that we also dealt with was 2 Corinthians 5, 14, uh, which says that if one died for all, then all were made to be dead. I think that's the best translation of that verse. Uh, and then Christ also saying, 
Thy, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men in unto me. And thus spoke he of the death that he died. And I think that the verse that we read in Romans is very applicable to the cross because where was sin made to abound? Where was it really made to abound? Not only seen uh, to be upon all men, but where where sin abounded. And that cannot be under the law because under the law, grace does not much more abound. It has to be at the cross where Christ himself took upon himself and took upon himself not the sins so much as we think of sinning because he had no sin in him he did he never did sin but he became sin he became in his flesh the man of sin he gathered into the body of his flesh and there's a number of scripture that deals with that uh, let me see Ephesians 2 verse 15 through 18 says having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances to make in himself a plain one new man so making peace that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross and then Colossians 1, 21 and 22 says, And you who were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. And then Hebrews 5, verse 7 through 10 says, Who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers, and, so, and it goes on talking about his, his death, him being made perfect in that, though he were a son, yet he learned, yet learned the obedience by the things which he suffered, being made perfect, and that's the perfect death, the perfect sacrifice. And in Hebrews 10:20 by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and then Philippians 2 verse 5 through 8 who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation took up on him the form of a servant was made in the likeness of of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself became obedient unto death even the death of the cross he gathered all mankind into the body of his flesh and I rather think Raven that this is why Paul said, perhaps, we'll see what you might think about that in Romans 7. Having by the law seen it to be impossible to achieve righteousness. Having by the law, no matter how much you tried, and Paul was, according to the law, perfect. And above all of the Pharisees, uh, so by the standard of the law, he kept the law above all of his peers. And he was zealous above all of his peers. And he makes those statements. Trying to find his righteousness in the law, he came to only find that it condemned him unto death. And he cried out, 
O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ the Lord. <clears throat> so we're not talking about Christ sinning. We're not really even talking about Christ being made sin, though the scripture says that, but or there is a verse that indicates that, but most everyone, most Bible scholars agree that it is speaking, he was made to be the sacrifice sin for sin, seeing that he had no sin, he was able to become sin for all mankind. But that's something he gathered into his flesh. And he gathered all men into that and, and adjudicated all men as being dead in sin by that act in his flesh. Not dead to sin, but dead in sin. For as it was appointed unto man once to die. And that was because of sin. Then the judgment. So Christ died. Mm -hmm. and we're not talking about two deaths here. We're talking about the cross. We're talking about Christ dying once. But the greatness of that death is beyond, well, it's, it's beyond certainly any natural understanding. Yeah. You can't. You can't capture it in one aspect. You just no, can't. of the cross, because there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's five sacrifices and offerings. Right. One of those is a sin offering. Another trespassing. The others are not, and 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 the others are the acceptable offerings. What is acceptable unto God, and those are the offerings that came directly to the brazen altar, while the sin offering did not, except mm -hmm. for that which was the inward parts and I think that speaks of the Son of God himself who knew no sin that came to the brazen altar the rest of it was taken out outside the camp and burned and done completely away with Right. well you were just mentioning Romans 7 and I typed out a couple things here on that but one of the things that struck me while I was looking at this was <clears throat> he says and again he you know, even in my Bible, it says the Christian struggle. That's the heading over this <laughs> deal, but it's really not. This is a no. man under the law, uh, attempting to fulfill a spiritual testimony with his natural being, or by religion, or whatever. Um, and so he says this, For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And I think it is exposing the condition you were just talking about. Yeah. It's what the law does. The commandment comes and he understood at a point. He came to understand, came to understand I'm not what that's talking about. Nor could I ever be. Uh, this uh, I was looking at this in Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown, and I like the way they kind of said it. He said, I saw myself in the eye of the law, never kept, nor to be kept, a dead man. In other words, he saw himself as a man who had not that life in him. Nor that righteousness. Yeah, yeah and, and he saw himself as not having what that law demanded. The life of which it demanded, which entails righteousness, holiness, all of it. Yeah. Therefore he saw that in himself he could never be or keep that law. And I think that's what he talks about because of this condition being exposed, and I think continually exposed to Paul, because he was an honest man desiring God. Yes. But it continually exposed his true state of being dead in sin and trespasses. And that's what he says on in this. Um, 
that the evil was always present even when he tried to do good. That's the same thing, being dead in sin and trespasses, the sin that was in him, the law of sin that reigned in his members. And so I think that's the same thing finally coming to that exposure where you see Paul in Galatians 2.19. By the law, I am dead to the law. And that's, this is not the same thing as that, but what, it, it drove him to that. It, the law did what it was supposed to do for Paul. Yeah, it brought him, it brought him to the death of Christ. Yeah, it brought him to the death that he might truly live unto God, and then he explains how. Not I, but Christ living in me. And uh, that's the other aspect of the cross, of death, un- death to sin. But, uh, but I was seeing this, that this whole thing was, the law exposed his condition as being that wretched man that was dead in trespasses and sin that could never fulfill its demand. And that's the state of mankind without, you know, the, the state of mankind in natural birth. Yes. You know. And, and 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 that's it. There, the all men, and in and consequently the judgment is what the verse is really saying. And consequently, the judgment. Right. And uh, it, it's to me, it's a shame that the cross is not presented to to sinners in that way. That, that in, in Christ gathering all mankind into his, into his death, that all mankind became once and for all adjudicated in death. It was not thou shalt surely die. Mm-hmm. Now it is you are dead. You are dead. You have no hope. You're without right. hope. You're without that. You're without everything. You have no hope at all. By Christ, the judgment of God came. The adjudication came, and God saw humanity die right. in the body of His Son, and the Son suffered that that death. Yeah. That. And he suffered for a little while that separation mm-hmm. from God. Uh, no doubt about that. Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. For he had no sin. He, his was a death of obedience, mm-hmm. not disobedience. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and therefore for him there was a resurrection out of from among the dead so that if the dead who would hear his voice and obey might live but then there comes the grace of God mm-hmm. and, and, and what I saw there in verse 20 is where did sin what Paul was talking about what the law talked about and uncovered yes it did but where was it finally and totally exposed yeah. where did it abound it abounded when the and see that's the whole point his flesh no one saw anything but his flesh there nobody did no nobody did the father saw what was going on mm-hmm. but he was beaten he was bruised Isaiah talks about this that's not just a normal sacrifice you didn't get a goat up there and beat him to death or a lamb or a turtle dove or a bullock something's going on there that that you don't find uh in the type and shadow there you you get a little taste of it when it's taken out the sin offering and done away with and burned up the ashes scattered and none of it's any good except that inward part again that can't be seen Mm -hmm. what sin abounded right there on the cross when Jesus Christ was stripped naked there he was exposed the son of God and in his flesh 
every man, woman, every person was exposed. Mm -hmm. Sin abounded. And there also is where grace did much more abound. Yeah. Uh, and 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 uh, grace was made possible until the judgment comes. What need is there of grace? Right. I mean, you know, what need? Look back at, at Noah, who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why did he have to? A flood came. Right. A flood came and killed everything that had the breath of life in it. Grace was the only way out of that. Mm -hmm. Now we say that, you know, we'll say we preach the way in the church world preaches grace is God's answer to sin. Grace is God's answer to your being, I mean, absolutely, totally dead in sin. Right. Grace is God's answer for that. But what, what happens by the grace of God? And I, and I wrote some of that down so I wouldn't just... Uh, you know, just stay on point here. Let me quickly read it. It's just in my handwriting. It hadn't got anything to do with reading this whole stack. Uh, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Now, I'd like to say something on that. Much more, much more. See, that, see that, that makes us to know it's just got to be Christ involved here. Mm -hmm. look, look at God's much more. I'll run through some verses and you can... Uh, Luke 13 Luke 11 13 uh, just if you then be an evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them uh, at Luke uh, 12 24 consider the ravens for they neither sow nor reap and yet you have storehouse nor have neither storehouse nor barn God feedeth them how much more are you better than the fowls we're only much more anything through the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the much more. And, and, and these verses show that very, very <coughs> clearly. If God clothed the grass, this is still all in, in Luke 12, uh, which is today in the field, tomorrow in heaven. How much more will he clothe you? And, and that's not, people will take that and think that means the shirt that I'm wearing. Well, no, 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 no. They're, the grace doesn't give me a new shirt grace is that by which we're clothed upon of Christ Romans 5 9 through 10 same thing for if then when we were enemies you were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more and that reconciled to God by the death of his son is where we were all gathered up as one humanity and put to death right. now friends God reconciled his enemies by, this sounds difficult, this sounds hard, by killing them. He reconciled his enemies, but the son was the method of that. Mm -hmm. the, the son bore that death. There's the love of God, there's the, you know, but the son bore that death. Nonetheless, reconciliation is not God saying, well, you've been bad and I forgive you. <laughs> Reconciliation is death. By the death of his son. By the blood of his son. But if that is true, if God did that, then there's a much more to it. And the much more is grace. Yeah. Much more, much more we shall be saved by his life. Romans 5.15, but not as the offense so also is the free gift, which is grace. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, the gift of God by grace, which is one man, Jesus Christ, abound yeah. unto many. And in uh, verse 17, for if by one man's offense, here's the good verse, well, they're all good, but here's a statement. For by one man's offense, death reigned. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first realized 
what really happened at the cross. I saw, I saw that death quit reigning. Now that doesn't mean there's not sinners who, who live in sin. But the power of death, and we know that, the power of death was broken. Yeah. Why? Because Christ suffered it once and for all it, and, and came forth triumphant. Right. The power of it was broken for those who would come to him. That's right. The power of it was broken through death. Death ceased to <clears throat> reign with the upper hand, which it had. Yeah. Had done all that way. Death reigned. And I saw that and I looked and I, we're not going to, and I'll cut that short, but rain by one, here comes the mu much more. They which receive abundance of grace. Abundance of grace, darling, has a name. Abundance of grace has a name. And the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Okay. He reigns. Yeah, I saw what you were just saying about the reigning and you were also saying earlier that it's not two deaths or whatever. It's very simple and I don't claim to know it to its full extent. But a very simple example of that, simple is a bad word, but That's all right. is, is Egypt and the deliverance from Egypt. One death, one lamb. But to one it was destruction. It was the death of the firstborn, the death of their gods, their idols, all of it. Yes. Judgment. But to those who would come to the door, it was the door of deliverance by that blood. That same blood. They were delivered from that death. And one thing we <laughs> is that he didn't bring just a bunch of individuals and deliver them out of Egypt by that door they came into God's predetermined view or predetermined understanding of them which is what the cross truly does yeah. Israel is my son my firstborn that's firstborn out from among the dead yeah. they were found in him having nothing of their own whether they ever came to see that or not, that was God's understanding of that one death. It was the destruction of the firstborn of Egypt, but it was also the deliverance of his firstborn. Yes, and except that firstborn out from among the dead live in you, you're still dead in sin. Yeah, because what we were talking about, the adjudication of all men dead, well, that stands. It stands. It, it, it's a that stands right now. Forever. And the fact is, many view salvation as the resurrection of that man or the resurrection of men but that is contradictory to the judgment because that judgment is forever settled yep. God's relation to that that mankind that kind of man is, is, is done it is it, it, it's contrary to that story you just told right it is they couldn't get across the Red Sea and that's why I, I had someone recently, you know, well not recently, but you know, who, who was going toward you know, universal reconciliation, universalism, and all of that. And I, that, that, just the story of Egypt totally nullifies that. Yes, it does. He didn't save Egyptians. He killed Egypt. He, I mean, you know, it was, we all be dead men. That's what they said. Yeah, yeah. The, they had to come and apply the blood. They had to walk through that blood. They, they, you know what I'm saying? There was a salvation that was brought about by the blood of the Lamb. It wasn't just done for, you know, every everything. It was it was it was there for all, but only those who entered. Well, God's grace is was the door there. Exactly. But it was the door with blood on it. Blood. Yeah. And that, see, that gives you the view of the cross where, I made a statement here to keep me on that, that uh, the death of the cross is both judgment and grace. Yeah. And that's what you said just now. To, to, to the one, 
it was judgment. Actually, it, it's, it's really judgment, period. But to those that receive, it's judgment of grace. So we pass from judgment upon sin to judgment of grace. Mm -hmm. But So then that brings us to then what is to the, to the believer what is the judgment of grace? What is the judgment of grace? It's not that we don't die because all men die. Mm -hmm. All men die. That's the judgment. And what's the judgment of grace? And to me, and in the scriptures, I think that the judgment of grace is what Paul describes as a baptism into Christ. Because this, this relates to what happens to the believer. But we all know that when they went in through that door, they entered in through his death. Mm -hmm. They came to the blood in obedience to the Lamb, but it's still a, it's it's still death. That same judgment touched them all. Absolutely. Yep. But grace abounds. Mm -hmm. So what? So the question I that I asked years ago, and I'm still saying, how do you come from being dead in sin? To what we read in the scripture as being dead to sin. Christ, though he gathered all men into his flesh, which is the reason I read the verses about the flesh. I mean he didn't die. Yes, he died. He bore the judgment as a man in the in the flesh. He he bore that. Uh, but there was no sin found inwardly in him and Paul says in Romans 6 that in that he died he died once to sin mm -hmm. in that he liveth he liveth unto God this is what you were talking about the last time right. in that he died he died to sin that in my opinion is exclusively his death. God provided, by the grace of God, he provided himself a sacrifice for sin so that Christ not only died as me, he also, as the lamb, died for me, but I've still got to accept his death. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, 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 and you have to look deeply into this, folks, and I don't think you can look there except the Lord opened the eyes of our understanding and we see what flesh cannot see, and that is the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, not as a man. This may confuse you, and I don't want to confuse anybody, but not as a man, but as an obedient son, the Son of God. The verses that I just read to you concerning humbled himself, came obedient to death, not just to die with tuberculosis or cancer or being shot in the head. No, no. The death of the cross. Because there is where we see the facets of the cross. While to these it is an absolute judgment to all men is an absolute judgment but by the then then the grace of God abounds and it abounds for every man who will receive the grace of God but the grace of God involves the dead who hear my voice right. and obey yeah. they shall live how do we do that how do we who are dead in sin ever become dead to sin? And it doesn't violate the cross at all. Paul says to the, to the Galatians, or, or well, uh, let me see, is it to the, yeah, I believe it is, to the Galatians. Or is that, no, to the, in his letter to the Romans, in chapter 6. Uh, he says, 
in Romans 6 verse 3 what do you not understand because they were thinking the grace of God just allowed us to go on sinning yeah. or living our own life or doing whatever we want to do and then God would give a whole bunch of grace and he said that's not, <coughs> what, I, that's not what I mean that's not what I said here is the abounding of grace do you not understand that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death that like as he was raised up out from among the dead we also should walk in newness of life that's talking about a work of the spirit of God baptizing us into the, into the very Christ who himself is dead to sin mm -hmm. alive to God the resurrection and the life and it is in it, it's going through the door yeah. it's entering in through the door he is that death that gift that sacrifice that is acceptable unto God and we're baptized into his death so that we are not dead in sin we are dead in Christ mm -hmm. to sin he that is dead to sin is freed Free from sin, sin. Yeah. but it but there is that there is that death there is that blood there is that door I still have but but the difference is rather than having no life period I have as my only life Christ right. liveth in me Paul says I live but now wait a minute not I and he saw the difference there now Christ liveth in me and it's not me and Jesus living it's Christ living in my soul yeah. There is the abounding grace of God. And I thought about that because I thought, okay, we, the way we present it in the church world without understanding, we, we say, okay, uh, we all were dead in sin regardless of the cross. We make the cross God's answer to those that were dead in sin. Actually, God's answer, God's, it was God's answer to sin. Mm hmm and he adjudicated sin to be sin death to be death and those that were there he adjudicated dead in sin right. and yet yes the cross is the answer but you've got to look deeper into the cross right. in order to, to, to see what's going on there so we don't do that so we just preach it well at the cross God killed his son and that was the grace of God so he could forgive us as sin, of sin well, what he did is he reconciled us by the death of his son and he killed. He killed the Jew, he killed the Gentile so that he could bring forth out from that one new man whose name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And, 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 and through baptism, new birth and baptism, that man is given a new body an altogether new body it's not Jew it's not Gentile it's not bond free male female none of that because that that whole creation system is done away with at the cross as far as our salvation is concerned right. there's none of that in the new creation but we enter that new creation through his death I mean through the door yeah absolutely and it's in that I was reading some verses here that go ahead now. Um, let me 
find it here, but this is Romans 6 2. But knowing this, and I have, and I know a lot of people that have misunderstood this for a long time, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Christ, that the body of sin might be, and that's in the past tense, the body of sin being destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. And that's the same thing as sin not reigning. Exactly. So we serve it as servants of it. For he that is dead is freed from sin. There you go. And I'm thinking, here's this, you know, I think here you see both aspects. You see that coming to him in his death means basically that we have that that body of sin has been destroyed. We are dead to it. It's it's the same thing as Colossians talks about. I think I have it here too. But um, to me, it's the same thing. Um, in whom also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with Him in baptism wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Yeah, we're raised through the faith. Right. It's faith in the operation. operation. Exactly. Exactly. And to me, that's the same thing as the faith of the Son of God he exactly. talks about same in Galatians 2.20. Exactly. It is exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's the exact same faith. But that's attached to, and I never really, and I still don't really understand but that's attached to the previous verse that says, and you are complete in him. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems like he totally goes away from that and then begins to talk about this, putting off the body of sin. And this is the same body of death that he talks about in Romans uh, yeah. Romans 7. Romans 7. And anyway, he, he to me, this complete in him always looked as if it was something separate but then I read this and it's it's not the same word in the Greek but it has a lot of the same meaning this is 1 Peter 2.24 and I want your comments on this because I, I you know who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness and then he says this, by whose stripes you were healed. And I'd never associated that with the reality of being dead to sin. You know, I mean, it's always been quoted as something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, who yeah. you were healed and all. It's always been physical. Brought that in, yes. To the but to me, you were healed and complete in him are the exact, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Because, uh, well, I, I got we used word studies in this, but uh, I won't get into that. That can get into some controversial part. But to me, it's the same thing. Because there is what, what I read a while ago, that he that is dead is free. There's a freedom that the death to sin brings. Oh my Lord, yes. See. And it's the liberty yeah. he talks about of not I, but Christ living. I mean, but you have to see it in the whole light of the cross. You can't just see it as, you know, a forgiven sinner set free to live again, try his best. What you have to see is that he has put away destroyed that whole that whole body of sin that if now you live unto God at all meaning a life that's recognized of God at all it is because you live by the one and this has to do with the faith in the operation of God that raised him absolutely that he's the one that lives here and, and that's the faith in the operation of God. They yeah. live by faith. We, faith is living knowing that I have no life but Christ. Right. And that's the whole, you know, I think that's the same thing as Ephesians, uh, you know, that which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And his, his whole thing was that you may come to know that in the revelation of Christ. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't 
like I said, this is all kind of still not worded correctly in my mind. But yeah, but well, it is, and you and you and you and I, I think you worded it well. But that 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 is exactly what that means. And and being healed, there was this, there was this always this promise to Israel of of healing, healing, yep. Yep. and even it can go along with the. Uh, opening of your eyes, the opening of your ears, the cleansing of the leper, the lame shall walk. And that's what he did when he was on earth, demonstrating all of that. And he demonstrated all that. But that, see, that's speaking about the, the fulfillment of that in the body of Christ. Not just in a natural body of Christians, but the, the body of Christ. Uh, and, and, and by his stripes you were healed. And... Uh, so that's not a I mean yes honey I, the Lord heals I mean you know the Lord does many things for these for these old earthen bodies uh, I have no doubt in my mind that I have received that very reality recently but the point is this body will still die that's not what that's talking about. No, I, let me just read this for just, just this little part of Weiss' word studies because he says that. Um, but he says the context of that verse does not mean the healing of the body. He, he says other places it does. But that context doesn't. He says the context, the word is found clearly decides the meaning of the word here, not that of the healing of the body but that of the salvation of the soul. Yes. And that salvation, again, just, I mean, it shouldn't be new to me, but that salvation being the fact that you're dead unto sin. Because he who lives in you is dead unto sin and alive unto God. And I think that's the whole work of the Spirit now in our hearts is to make that a reality in the seeing of him, in the knowing of him. Paul says that. A realization, not reality, yeah. The realization of that reality. Right. In Romans six, Paul says that, and I, and see, you, you got folks, just stay in the Word for a while, and just say, God, just let me see your Son here. Uh, just the Son of God revealed in our soul must be the light by which we discern, rightfully divide, discern the scripture and that's just the truth we're not theologians with a string of doctor degrees I have nothing against that either but the point is unless the, it's revealed of the spirit and not revealed verses revealing the son that by his mind and in the light of him we see the scripture uh, and that's where it's got to be. So Romans 6, it says there first, knowing this. Well, the first thing we're confronted with, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. But then, that's, see, where is the relationship with God in that? Mm -hmm. So he goes on and says, and it's almost like saying, yes, reconciled by his death much more saved by his life uh, well here's the point there he goes on he says <coughs> knowing that Christ so all of this has got to be bound up with finally with this knowing that Christ right. being raised. having died unto sin or how, how, how does that it says I'm, being, I'm in Romans 6 here it says me. being raised from the dead dieth no more yeah knowing that Christ there we go yeah. see knowing that Christ because it says if we be dead then he changes here in verse 8 from that uh, he that is dead is freed from sin well, what is he talking about that that judicial death that judgmental death puts you dead in sin and so Paul is talking about the grace of God and those that are now baptized into Christ are baptized into his, into his death. And that brings you from, from the judgment upon 
the death of Adam and me were all dead because there I stand then dead separated from God no hope dead I mean adjudicated dead by the son of God himself by taking that into his flesh and putting it to death there I go man and most of never you know the, 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 the thing about it is that most of us never face any kind of judgment until it's through Christ yeah. and, 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 and when we see Christ we see my Lord dead dead hopelessly dead but then comes back Paul said but don't you understand that we who were baptized into Christ Right. were baptized into his death and to me that's that circumcision of the heart that right. inner because there's that inner work to where I how can I who am dead in sin become dead to sin it is through the grace of God baptizing us into the one who is dead to sin right. and his death there then becomes my death now, hon, what we need to understand is that's like, be, it, it's not, but just hear my words. I'm trying to just say, that's like being double dead. <laughs> I mean, come on. If you can hear me, I mean, there, there is no room there. Put your fingers together like I've got. But there is no room there for anybody to live but Christ. Yeah, that's why I like this, how he words it here. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion. That mean, I mean, he's totally removed from that realm altogether. Oh, never to relate to it again. And that's, I mean, that's beautiful. And that's the basis of our reckoning. Right. In the next verses, yep. therefore, likewise... And there again is the grace of God to provide to provide a door into his own sacrifice. To provide a door. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin yeah. and alive to God. But look how he puts this. Through, through in, with, through Jesus Christ the Lord. Man. And, and, and so that's, now that's the death we face daily. Mm -hmm. I don't face being dead in sin and that judgment. I mean, it's there. It's there forever. But we're over here, as the story that you told, and what we're involved with is the, is the one who died for us. That is, he made, he made himself, he became, how can I say this? He, in the first instance, he joined with me in my death and he perfected it for all mankind dead in sin. And if you can hear this, folks, even there is the grace of God because had he not done that, sin would still be reigning. Still be reigning. Still be reigning. Still be reigning. He gathered up that whole reign into himself once and for all put it to death so that those that are gathered up in that dead in sin can by the grace of God become dead to sin by being baptized into the death of Christ buried with him and having him as our resurrection and our life and reckon our soul, the condition of our soul, reckoned the condition of our soul based upon who Christ is. His state, yep. Who he is. Yeah. 
I, th I think as he is, so are we. Dead to sin, alive unto God through him. So, the folks that Rabin did mention a while ago, many who have gone into the universalism and the ultimate of reconciliation, the various names they give it, they do that by failing just what Rabin was talking about. They do that by, first they miss the testimony of that. All Egyptians dead. We're dead men. And yet, in the midst of that same death, God provided an escape, well, yeah, he provided, he provided. Grace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dead to death by death. Death to death by death. Yeah. Only, and that one you had to accept. Right. You had to be obedient to it. The other one come up on you because you're disobedient in the first place. A judgment. To this one you must be obedient. But it's the same cross. It's just the one who is there is both the judgment of God, the grace of God. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm leaning toward dealing in the, tomorrow, whenever, on this next monthly CD. Because I'm there in the study and I was listening to the last month's CD today. Uh, the judgment. The judgment. And to those who come to Christ, that judgment is threefold. They're in the tabernacle. The judgment of grace, the judgment of truth, the judgment of mercy. But there's blood connected with all of those. Mm -hmm. The blood goes all the way to the whole, to, you know, man. Well, that's the way with one thing that has been continually becoming clearer that was so confusing before. Because, you know, you read in the scripture in Ephesians and different places in Colossians where we were just reading a while ago if you go further down in Colossians 2 in whom we have forgiveness yeah. in whom we have all of the things that we think God has dangling out there for the sinner we have that in him and I always thought you know okay I screw up so now I'm back over here on this side dead again Gotta in sin for got to add for, ask for forgiveness so I can get back over here in the good side dead to sin well I mess up again I'm back over here but that's not the way it works because it's not my state that he's dealing with it's the state of the one who's living in me is my life that's who he's dealing with and that's the one in the light of whom he's dealing with me it's never Raven you you know it's me, it's the faith in the operation of God that raised him and from the dead. And that's so true, see, Braben, that's so true. Because people accuse us and say, well, you just that's a license for sin. Right. Let me read Romans 6 to you again. <laughs> what? <laughs> How can that be so when you are dead to sin? Do you not understand? No, it's God forgiveness in that way for instance in the New Testament it means removal of the cause. Exactly. It's just God applying judgment. Well and it is also in Christ my soul coming to, it's that dying daily you were talking about, coming to understand the the absolute removal of the cause. That's it. And knowing that my soul is separated from the that cause forever dead to it crucified to it however you want to say it but continually in the light of him in the light of the life that is present understanding that that cause of the offense and all of that has been totally removed and to me that's a continual realization a continual reckoning that has to it come. is and if people could hear that there is no condemnation in forgiveness no there's no condemnation and forgiveness. Neither is there any license for sin. Right. Because it's forgiveness based upon I am dead. Right. And Christ is my life. And, and also it is for those who are walking in Christ. Because it says forgiveness of sins and redemption. Yep. 
redemption. And redemption. Redemption is always there with it. Mm -hmm. Redemption's always with it. Uh, well, we're out of time uh, in our discussion here today. And as it happened, we're kind of in a place where we don't have to run over too much uh, today. Uh, let us know, hon, if the Lord is dealing with you along this line. Uh, what we're talking about here is not two or three crosses. We're talking about a comprehension of Christ as a full and complete and finished work of the cross. Christ himself is the finished work. And that's the one who lives in you if you are born of him. That's Christ. And so, yes, uh, that reality of him, the full reality of him, continues to work in us. Not I, but Christ. Not I, but Christ. Uh, when I would live, uh, the judgment of grace is standing there. And I'm calling that the judgment of grace because that's what it is. The judgment of grace is standing there. Even on those sacrifices that were acceptable to God, every, everything that wasn't a sweet savor was burned up. And the savor of Christ came forth in resurrection form. God's answer to believers who would have a life of their own is the revealing of the Son. The showing of the Son. Every time I see Christ, I realize it is not me. It is Christ living in me. And that has got to be a continual realization. Mm -hmm. So, let us, let us hear from you. You can call us, you can email us, you can write a letter any way you like. We've kind of gathered up some classes together so we can get back on schedule here now, for a while at least. And uh, we love to hear from you. So, please, let us hear from you. May the Lord richly bless you. And uh, we look forward to being with you again. Amen.